Shalom on the Sabbath day. Welcome to the Philadelphia Shabbat Assembly. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Today is the 19th day of the ninth month of the year 5783 on the set apart calendar as we keep it by the full moon being the new moon. I know some of you think I'm a broken record on that, but a lot of people might have been the first time they watched the video and they might be wondering why we're two, two weeks difference. Well, if you're wondering that and you're watching for the first time, or maybe you're wondering that and you've watched many times, mm -hmm. watch Signs in the Heavens on Philadelphia Assemblies at YouTube, which I share it on my Facebook page every day. Okay, not that we're trying to push people to believe our way, but we want our, people to understand why we're persuaded in the way that we are. And unless someone can come up with scripture, not external books, in other words, we're not going to correct the Torah with the book of Enoch or the book of Jubilees. Okay, we're not going to do that. We're going to correct those books by the Torah or the Tanakh, or the Old Testament. We're not going to do it in reverse in any way, okay? So unless you could show us something in Scripture where that we're in error, you know, it's probably going to be a waste of time. Just like with you, if you're set on yours, on what you're doing, it is a waste of time for us to beat on you about it. And nor should we, okay? Because we are, none of us, 100% sure on the calendar if we did there wouldn't be people keeping it at different times right. okay and and if we today's lesson is is titled the few or the many question mark if you want to be part of the few then you need to be following the word of elohim or the scriptures okay mm -hmm. not the book of enoch not the book of jubilees Nothing wrong with studying those books and to get better understanding on Scripture, but you don't correct Scripture by outside books, okay? Or I don't, okay? And you could do what you want, but I want to be part of those few, and we're going to go discuss all that and what Scripture says about the few, okay? And about what it says about the many, okay? It's also... The 16th day of the de of the month of December on the Gregorian calendar of the year uh, 2023. Okay, so that's where we are on man's time, and we're on the 19th day of the ninth nice. month. Chislev, Chislev, of the Hebrew calendar. That's what the ninth month is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're working now towards the 10th month. We're getting. Oh, we're past halfway on the set-apart calendar. So, again, the title of today's message is The Few or the Many? Question mark. Okay? We're going to kind of tie, you know, I'm going to mention a few times, or I'm going to try to remember to mention our brother, um, uh, John Zaglul, or Zags, as he calls himself on the internet, uh, our other uh, part of the three stand cord. He did a, a video yesterday called The Man of Lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Who is he? And, you know, he did a very good job. I want to call that out today. He did a very good job of, of, of showing us that ultimately it's, it's Satan or Ha Satan, the Satan. Okay. And the, and also tied that to the overall what is known as the congregation or what they call the church, okay, and how they have done away with the Torah. So in doing that, you make yourself lawless or the instruments yes, of Ha Satan or Satan. Very very powerful ten minute message. I wanted mm -hmm. to bring attention to that and really give him the the credit that he d deserves in his understanding of scripture the young man's 23 years old and let's all you know remember that it, 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 he you know Yahuwah does not call okay we're going to talk about that the qualified he qualifies the called okay and if there's going to be many called we're going to call that today too but there'll overall be many few that are chosen and 
that's our message today, the few or the many question mark. So we're going to open in prayer, and then we're going to dive into this lesson. We're going to stand and face the place where Yahuwah chose to place his name there, and we're going to open in prayer. Almighty Father Yahuwah, we praise you in all things. And Father, we ask that you would continue to bless us, and we praise you and thank you for the breath of life, a chance to live another day, because we couldn't be out there helping to put the alarm out to call those that are being called to the truth, Father, of your word, unless we had that breath of life. Father, we thank you and praise you for providing our day-by-day -day needs and making sure we have food to eat, clothing, shelter, and, and, and to realize that that's really all we need, Father, that our needs are really few and that we need to be focused on you and your ways and not the ways of the world because the ways of the world is the path that leads to destruction. And we all know that. And Father, again, we thank you and praise you for your precious son, Yahushua HaMashiach, the Messiah that gave and came and died for the sins of the world, that we all would have the opportunity, Father, to approach you and to walk in your ways and that your ways become our ways because we love you and that's why we do what we do. And when we're in error, Father, we ask that you would teach us and correct us. Father, help that your Torah, our Torah, to be our, our guide, our schoolmaster, to show us how to come to Yahushua HaMashiach, how to become like him and walk the way he walked, Father. And we, again, we ask that you would give us the words to say as we teach this message. Make sure that our hearts are in the right area and following your your Messiah, your son, your Ben, your Yahushua HaMashiach, and that we're walking in his footsteps so that we would make qualify to walk and approach you directly through your son and through your Ruach. Father, again, we ask that you would give us that extra unction of your Ruach today as we Teach this lesson, Father, and let it be your words and not ours. And Father, we also ask that you would open hearts and minds to the truth so that more would follow your son, your Yahushua HaMashiach, and not a, a teacher, not us, not anyone, because if we do that, we're not worthy of our Messiah. Therefore, if we're not part of his body, then we're not going to be in that kingdom neither at the first resurrection nor at the second, because many are called and few are chosen. And again, we ask all these things, Father, in your precious Son, Yahushua, or Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. All right. Yep. I'm excited about this. You know, I, we've taught these type of lessons in the past, but everyone's new. And we're going to use the scripture we have today to f focus in what it takes to be part of the few and not part of the many. Whenever you're ready, brother, go ahead. We're going to start out in Ecclesiastes. We just did the whole book shortly. Mm -hmm. During the feast, we kind of worked on it. And at the end, we completed it. But this one chapter just gives us a lot on the few, okay, even yep. though it's it's very specific here. Whatever, whenever, whenever good, you're ready. Uh, good opening for the lesson. It is. It is. I believe that it is. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for you shall find it after many days. Now, this bread, again, this is a Hebrew idiom, okay? And I talked about this before. And there's, you know, there's many things. I mean, we could cast our bread to the poor to help feed the poor and things like that. But this bread that he's talking about is that living bread, which is our Hamashiach, that he really knew was coming, but obviously didn't yet exist, okay? So he says, cast your bread upon the waters, for it shall find you shall find it after many days. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2, give a portion to seven and also to eight. For you know us not what evil shall be upon the earth. I mean, the, so deep. He says, give us a portion to seven, which is a complete number, mm -hmm. okay? And also to the eighth, because the eighth day 
It's talking about the new heaven and new earth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he says that will be important to understand. Go ahead. Verse three, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or, or toward the north in the place where the tree falls, there it shall be. These spiritually proverbs are so deep. Mm -hmm. He says, now the heavens are full right now. Okay. Why are the heavens full? Clouds, now, yeah. yeah, full of clouds and full of rain and all mm -hmm. that. In the winter season, a lot of rain pours out a lot of times or snow. But... The heavens are full right now in the Shamayim where Yahuwah is because the Messiah is up there with the Father and, 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 and it's full. Okay, but think about that. Okay, so the clouds be full of rain, they will empty themselves upon the earth. That happened when the Ruach came down. They emptied itself upon the earth and our Messiah was here and it was full because the Ruach was in him. Okay. But when the Messiah is getting ready to come back, and we don't know how long exactly, but he's going to come back and rule and reign here on the earth for a thousand years. And then he says, and if the tree fall to the, toward the south or to the, toward the north, in its place where the tree falls, there it will be. A lot of people, you know, there's a, a, a man's proverb that says if a tree falls in a forest and no one's there to see it or hear it, did it really fall? Well, yes, it did, regardless whether man's there to hear it or see it. And the Messiah is, is getting ready to return. We just don't know how long. Go ahead, brother. Verse 4, he that observes the wind shall not sow, and he that watches the clouds shall not reap. What's he talking about? Man, this is deep, guys. He says he that is just looking towards the wind. In other words, if there's going to be a windstorm coming, if you're just watching the weather, you're not going to sow. Okay. Now, we what's our job to be doing? We're to be sowing the word in season and in out right now. Okay. And so if we're paying attention to everything's going on around in the world and politics on the news and all that, so much that we're not focusing on the word of Elohim, we got a problem. Listen to what he says. He that observes the wind shall not sow or plant. And he that watches the clouds will not reap. In other words, at the time of the harvest, you won't be out there doing the job. Now, what are we supposed to be doing? The harvest is plenty. Some we're going to read that later, but the laborers are few. Okay. So we got to be focused on, on, on sowing the word of God and reaping the harvest that is to come. Go ahead, brother. Verse five, as you know, not what is the way of the spirit, Hallelujah. nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, you know it's not the works of Elohim who makes all. Amen. How deep is that? After what we just talked about, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, we really don't understand the Ruach fully. We know what's teaching us all things, and we know it lived in our Messiah, and it lives in us now. And we don't know how a baby forms in a womb and how it grows in there. Even, even all the scientists don't fully understand all that. Mm -hmm. I've heard that was with a child. Now, the heavens still got Messiah up there, and, you know, he's already came once, but he's going to come again. Even so, you know not the works, or you don't understand the works of Elohim, who makes all. You see, that was the Father, and he yeah. did that through his Ruach. That's how he made all. Go ahead. Verse 6, in the morning sow your seed, and in the evening withhold not your hand, for you, you know it's not whether it shall prosper either this or that, or which, they both shall be alike good. Solomon, man, and this is not hard to understand. It should be easy. What are we, what are we called to do? Mm -hmm. We're called to sow the bread, I mean, sow the seed, which is the word, okay? And we, need, and we also need to be ready to reap the harvest, okay? Because that first resurrection is going to be part of that reaping of the harvest, okay? It says, in the morning, sow your seed. That means every day, not just once in a while, not when you first don't come to the truth, but every day. And in the evening, don't hold back your hand. In other words, when it's time to make the harvest, or you know it's not whether, whether shall, which shall prosper you, either that, this or that, or whether they both shall be the same. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7, truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing 
it is for the eyes to behold the sun. What the signs are in the heavens. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're always to be focused on what's going on in the daylight. We're children of light, not children of darkness. So we need to be awake in the daytime and, and see that sun come up. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8, but if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let, let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. Yes, sir. All that comes is vanity. Now think about that. You know, whether your days, whether your physical days here on earth are many or few, you don't know. Okay, so while today is yet called today, we need to be about our father's business, which Amen. is sowing seed. Okay, the word and preparing to reap the harvest. Okay, and, we, and, and if we're not doing that, you know, then we're not going to be chosen. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9, rejoice, O young man, in your youth. Yes, sir. And let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Yes, sir. And walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know you that for all these things, Yahuwah will bring you into judgment. Yep. Now, and, and he said, you know, that's what we all do when we're young. We first, before mm -hmm. we really come to the truth, some come earlier, some come later. Okay. Like our brother John Zags, he come to this truth earlier. So Father called him earlier. I pray that he's going to be here a long life because he's got a lot to say. Okay. Verse 10. Okay. Verse 10. Go ahead. Uh, therefore... Remove sorrow from your heart. Yes, sir. Put away evil mm -hmm. from, your, from your flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. They're, they're coming and going like the wind, and yep. we need to be focused on sowing those seeds and reaping that harvest. Okay? And if we're distracted by everything that's going on in the world, or we're going to be off point mm -hmm. and off message, and we're not going to be part of that few. We'll end up being part of the many, and we're going to talk much about that. Let's go to Proverbs. Yep, chapter 7. Proverbs backwards. chapter 7. More of Solomon, Solomon. before we jump into that Red Hot Asha mm -hmm. New Testament. Okay. Proverbs chapter 7. There's so much in the, in the Tanakh about this. We don't oh. have time to cover it all. You know, we, our video signs in the heavens. Mm-hmm. I've noticed that it goes forward two steps and it comes back three. And that's because it's an hour and 55 minutes long. We're trying to keep our messages as concise as we can and to the point. Go ahead, brother. Chapter 7 of Proverbs, verse 1. My, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with you. Okay, what's our number one job? Keep our, he, mm. He's telling you here, my number one job is my son. If we're going to be Yahuwah's son, Keep his commandments, okay, and, and his words. And that's talking about doing his Torah. Okay, go ahead. Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of your eye. So, again, keep his commandments, which is that 10. And then he says his Torah as the apple of your eye, okay? Mm -hmm. Because Israel is the apple of his eye. And, and Torah is what they were commanded to do. So if that Torah is not the apple of your eye, you got a problem. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3, bind them upon your fingers, mm -hmm. write them upon the table of your heart. Circumcision of the heart, that's going to get you there. Circumcision in the flesh will not, doesn't mean you can't, don't need to be circumcised. Means that's not what's going to get you there. Go ahead. Verse 4, say unto wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your kinswoman. And this is where the Ruach is compared mm -hmm. To feminine. Now, it doesn't mean the Ruach's feminine because right. the Ruach is Yahuwah's spirit, okay, his Ruach, and he, it's there, but he, this attribute that the Ruach has is feminine, okay? So it says, say unto wisdom, you are my sister, okay, whether you're male or female, and call understanding your kinswoman. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5, that they may keep you from the strange woman, from the stranger which Flattereth with her word. Now, well, who's a strange woman? This is your flesh. Yeah. This is the world that attracts your flesh. The spirit of disobedience. Mm -hmm. The spirit of lawlessness that yes. his brother John talked about. Yeah. And, and, and do we want to be uh, instruments of the Most High, or do we want to be right. instruments of Ha Satan? Go ahead, brother. Verse six. For at the window 
of my house, I looked through my casement. Okay. And behold, and, and behold, among the simple ones, I discern among the youths a young man void of understanding. Because in our youth, be, at least our youth before we're called, okay, no matter when that starts, we are without mm -hmm. any understanding. We're void or without any understanding whatsoever. And we all have been youths. Okay, go ahead, brother. Uh, verse 8, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house. Now, that's talking about any of us as we uh -huh. walk through the world. We decide whether or not we want to attach ourselves to the world. And when we're young and without understanding, we go the way of the world. Go ahead, brother. In the twilight, in the evening, in the, in the black, in the dark night. That's why we want to be children of light. We don't Amen. want to be hanging around after dark where all these mischievousness stuff happens. Go ahead, brother. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. Now, a harlot could be a physical harlot. It could be the... Good congregation, goodness. okay, the yes, synagogue sir. of Ha Satan, yep. as it speaks of in, Reve in the book of Revelation. It, it's the world. It's everything that makes us want to be like everybody else. Go ahead, brother. It says it right here in love, and mm -hmm. she yep. is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Okay, she doesn't stay in her in her house where mm -hmm. she should. She's out there trying to draw yep. others in. Go ahead, brother. Now is she outside? Now in the streets and lies in wait at every corner to see who she might pull in. Is that not the feminine side of Ha Satan? Mm -hmm. Is he a not a, the a, a lion looking, One. walking around looking for whom he may, he may devour? devour. Amen. This is all here. Yes. Go ahead, brother. Verse, verse thirteen. So she caught him and kissed him, and without an a brazen face said unto him, "I have peace offerings with me." This day have I paid my vow. And that means, that's just like when Satan came to our Hamashiach, you know, and told him, you know, if you'll just bow down and worship me, mm -hmm. I'll give you all the kingdoms. things of the of kingdoms in the world. And Messiah got to see all that. And he said, tempt not Yahuwah your Elohim. Didn't say tempt not him. He said, don't tempt Yahuwah your Elohim. In other words, he ain't going to do that, throw himself down. Okay? Go ahead, brother. Fifteen, therefore, came I forth to meet you, diligently to seek your face, and I have found you. Yep, that's the young man. Go ahead. And I have, I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. And actually, that was the woman that's saying all this. Mm -hmm. I'll correct myself. Therefore, came I forth to meet you, the young man without understanding, diligent to seek your face. I have found you. And now... Here's her reward. I have decked my bed covered with tapestry. Luring him into his into his bed. That's Satan luring you into his in, in, into his grasp. Yes, okay, go yes, ahead. Sir. The lawless one. Go ahead. I have performed my bed with myrrh, mm -hmm. aloes, and cinnamon. The, all the attractive things to draw Amen. you in. World, money, people, all those yes, things. Sir. Go ahead. Verse 18. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace solace ourselves with love see that's the way satan shows up like an angel of light yes, and attracts sir. and draws you in go ahead for the goodman or the husband is not at home he is gone on a long journey okay and so this is a, a hebrew idiom again now he's getting ready to go into this and he's talking about him being gone for a month mm -hmm. okay and he's the good man in the house is talking about yahuwah okay and obviously the young man here, is, his son, has been Yisrael, okay, that's being drawn by this woman. So he's saying, the, for the good man is not at home. Go ahead, brother. Verse 20, he, he hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. And again, Mohadim, but if you go look it up, this actually word the means full the moon. full moon. 3677. Mm -hmm. So... The day appointed was the full moon. Mm. And if the full moon is the new moon, it is a Mohadim every month. Okay? You okay. see the connection? Go ahead. Verse 21. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. And, and, and that's what happened with Israel when they went after other gods. 
They went after the other Elohim of the other nations, and they got lured in, which ended up getting them cut off. Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 22, he goes after her straightway mm -hmm. as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction that's, of the stock. That's the young man without any understanding. Mm -hmm. He goes right out into the world and gets lured in by all those oh. things, just like a fool to the correction of the stocks. That's where you're locked in and you're caught, trapped, mm -hmm. and snared. Go ahead, bro. Till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasteth to the snare. And knows not that it is for his life. He's telling you death is on you. You're choosing death because you're not choosing his commandments. He says till a dart strikes mm. through his liver. Till he dies. If a dart goes through your liver, you're done. As a bird hastens to the trap or the snare. And knows not that it is his life that he's surrendering. His being. Go ahead, brother. Verse 24. Listen unto me. Now, therefore... O oh, you children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Pay attention, because his words were the Ruach's words that was talking to him, because he asked for wisdom. Go ahead, brother. Verse 25, let not your heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths. That's right, and that's the way of the world, that's Satan's way. Go ahead. For she has cast down many wounded yeah, many, many strong men have been slain. by, And that her. could be many spiritually strong men that she's yes, slain sir. because it's easy to give in to the flesh. Believe me, it is. And we're going to be tempted all the time. When we make a mistake, we got to repent and get back on Amen. path because we love Yahuwah. Amen. Okay, go ahead, brother. 27. Her house is the way to the grave. Yes, sir. Going down to the chambers of death. Sheho, this word is here. So it's not mm -hmm. talking about some eternal hell. It's talking about to the grave. And ultimately, we know we're going to come to the second death if we continue and do that. That's where the yep. dart goes through the liver. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Chapter one. New Testament. Brit Hadashah, yep. Shaul, or Paul in 1 Corinthians. Yes, sir. Paul's got a lot to say. Shaul does a lot of good mm -hmm. things, contrary to what most people say. Okay? Well, not most people, what many mm -hmm. say about Paul. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And and verse 18. Yep. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of Elohim. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to make sure we break that down and understand that mm -hmm. in the Greek it says being saved, okay? Yep. It says for preaching of the crucifixion or the death or the sacrifice yes. is to them that what? Perish. That doesn't say burn eternally right. it says perish look that word up in an english dictionary in a greek dictionary or in a hebrew dictionary foolishness but unto us which are being saved is the what power of elohim mm -hmm. to raise us from the she or the grave go ahead brother 19 for it is written i will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent and that's psalms 29, 14, that's quoting. Isaiah. I, Isaiah, I'm sorry, I wrote on top of it. Isaiah 29, 14. Mm -hmm. It says, again, it's written in Isaiah, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, or the wise of this world, okay? Mm -hmm. And will bring to nothing the understanding of those that the world calls prudent. Go ahead. 20, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the the, the disputer of this world and that world there is age okay where is the disputer of this age okay and that was the age going on then and there's disputers in this age too go ahead brother that not yahuwah made foolish the wisdom of this world yes sir and we need to make sure we kind of understand mm -hmm, how we're God. coming up with with this okay you see this word here that's Theos, that's 2316 in the, in the Greek, okay, which could mean the mighty one by itself. Mm -hmm. But when you put this signifier in front of it, I think I got it right. If I don't, forgive me, okay, I'm backwards. In it, yeah. It's in front of it in the Greek. It says the Theos, 
it's equal to the tetragrammatron or the the letters, which is R Y H U H. There's R Y H V H. Some mm -hmm. even right. think that word is equal to it according to Strong's. Okay. So yeah. we need to make sure we understand that, that this, this word should have been translated. Has not Yahuwah made the foolishness, made foolishness the wisdom of this world? And he does it all the time. People, they, they discover things, they think they know the truth, and then they look back later and say, oh, look, we've told you to do this, and it's killing you. Okay? He makes foolishness the wisdom of this world. Go ahead, brother. Okay. For, verse 21, for after that in the wisdom of Elohim, mm -hmm. okay, now this is that transferred El, Elohim, that God, the word by wisdom knew not God or the most high. The most high. That's that this word. Theon. Yes, sir. That's this word looks like it right here in the Greek. Which is equivalent to Yahuwah. Which, and again, we know Yahuwah is the most mm -hmm. high, but it means, this means the most high. Go ahead. It pleased Yahuwah by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yes, sir. Who did please? Yahuwah. Okay. The, the, to save the ones, because remember, it's just the few. And it's those that believe, not those that just keep his commandments blindly. Go ahead. 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And that's the wisdom of this world. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Why? Because they don't even see that Messiah had come, and so it's a stumbling block for the Yehudim, and then to the Greeks, that's foolishness. But he, Shaul still planted seeds. Go ahead, brother. 24, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of Elohim, and the wisdom of Elohim. Okay, so wow, isn't that something? Let's break that down real quick. Mm -hmm. But unto them which are called, many, many are called, but few are right. going to be chosen. Why? Because they're going to go after that rebellious woman that we read in Proverbs. Okay, so listen to what it says again, because the... Wait a minute, where, where was I? 24. 24. But unto them which are called, many are called, both Jews and Greeks, the anointed one, or the Hamashiach, the power of Elohim, because the Ruach lived in him, and he, while he walked here on earth, he was the power of Elohim, and the wisdom of Elohim through that spirit. Go ahead. 25. Because the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men. Yes, sir. And the weakness of Elohim is stronger. Than now, that's kind of an oxymoron, if you know what an oxymoron is, because we know that Yahuwah is not foolish and he's not weak. But compared to that, okay, the minor things of Yahuwah are so much higher than the major things of man. Okay? And the, his strong, creating, destroying power is stronger than all, and that's his ruach. Go ahead, brother. 26, for you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Why is that? Because, now, he, notice he said not many, because Shaul was a wise man, according to the, Jew, to the Jewish faith, okay, or beliefs. He was a wise man, but they called him for a special reason, to come to the nations, or the Gentiles, mm -hmm. to teach them the weightier matters of the Torah, okay? So, but not many mighty, because Yahuwah doesn't call, generally call the qualified, he qualifies the called. Go ahead, brother. 27, but Yahuwah has chosen the foolish things of the world. To confound the wise, and Yahuwah has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. What and what he what he means by that is he's chosen these things that they focus mm -hmm. on the foolishness instead of the right thing. See, because if they would hear with their ears, understand in their heart, and they would be healed. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't for them to do that. So he gets he he sends forth confusion and he uses satan to do it ha satan to do it he uses demons to do it he uses foolish people to do it okay to confound them to get them distracted from the truth go ahead in verse 20 28 and 
it says here, and the base yes, for the lowly things yes, of the world, and the things which are despised, hath God or Yahuwah yes. chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to nothing things that are. Well, wow, that's deep. And then what he said there, he says, and the lower things, just like we read back in Proverbs mm -hmm. chapter 7, okay, that that other woman that draws us oh. away of the world and things which are despised by the, everybody hath Yahuwah chosen these things which are not to bring that are nothing to bring to nothing people that are because many are called but only a few are to be chosen we're going to be tested by the world and these things of the world they're going to try to distract us and pull us away from the truth. Hebrews chapter 10 says that once you were enlightened, okay, illuminated, that's when the, the great trials of affliction would start. And that's what we're talking about here. Go ahead, brother. 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. In other words, nobody should be able to brag in his presence. Go ahead, brother. But of him are you in christ yahushua or jesus mm -hmm. whom of elohim is made unto us wisdom mm -hmm. and righteousness and sanctification and redemption and this is so important to understand what he says here now in in english you can't understand this that that was messiah in the old mm -hmm. testament there's no way that could work out listen to what it says in verse 30 but of him who the father mm -hmm. yahuwah are you in Yahushua HaMashiach, Amen. or the Messiah, Yahushua, yep. who of Elohim is made unto wisdom. Who? Yo, Yahushua was made unto wisdom by Yahuwah and his Ruach, yes. Elohim, and righteousness and sanctif uh, sanctification yep. unto redemption. And if we're going to do that, we're going to have to become like him. Go ahead, brother. Verse 31, then according to as it is written, he that glorifieth, let him glory in the mighty one. Yes, sir. In other words, he's saying there. So in other words, who does the glory go to? The mighty one of Israel. Who's the mighty one of Israel? Yahuwah. Okay. And now Yahuwah through Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. Okay. Now we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 11 yep. and read just a few verses. Yep. 1 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 11, starting in 23. For those who are on the phone, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. 23 okay. This is all talking about the, the taking of the Passover sacraments, okay? Just so we know that. He's going to get into Greek with us on a little bit here to make... Uh, just to make sure of my words. Yeah, I get it. If you, I don't have all marked on here <laughs> everywhere either in this one. In fact, I'm just going to read it right here, okay? So oh. verse, verse 23... For I received from El Elohim mm -hmm. what also I delivered to you, that the representative Jesus or Yahushua in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. So now, he, just before this, just for a short mm -hmm. recap, he told him, he said, don't take, because you don't take the Passover or Yahushua's supper every time, every week or every month. But he's telling you right here that the only time he'd give it to you is when he received it, and that was from Elohim, that which also I deliver unto you, that the representative, Yahushua, he represents Yahuwah or Elohim mm -hmm. here, the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. So he doesn't give, we don't take the Passover any night except the night when our Messiah suffered, okay, annually. Go ahead, brother. 24, and given thanks, he broke and, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken on behalf of you. This do for remembrance of me. See, and that's why he told him, he said, If you don't eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you got no part with me. And many left. They thought he was talking about cannibalism and so, or something. But it's talking about taking these sacraments. He was setting these sacraments for the day of the Passover that he was to suffer before it happened. Here, Paul's telling you that or reaffirming. He said, take, eat. This is my body. So when we eat that bread on the Passover, 
We are eating of his body because we're taking in the Messiah. We're becoming part of his body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me every year. Go ahead, brother. 25. In the same way, the cup also after supping, saying, this cup is the new covenant. Yes, sir. In my blood, as often as you drink, do this for remembrance of me. And, and he already told you how oftenly. This is where they'll take See, it out of context sure. and say, Oh, we could do it as many times as we want because it says as often as ye do, as you drink. No, he already told you he only gives that on the day it was given to him, which was the day our Hamashiach suffered. So and every year we're doing that in remembrance of him. Go ahead, brother. 26, for as often as you may eat this bread and drink this cup, you solemnly proclaim the death of the Lord. Until he comes, Elohim. Yep. Until he shall come, so that whoever uh, should eat this bread or drink of the cup of Elohim unworthily, mm -hmm. that one will be guilty of the body and of the blood of Elohim. Now, what's he talking about here? This is so deep, guys, and you can't take mm -hmm. stuff top surface. That's why it's so important to be led by the ruach or the spirit. It says, therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread. Now, you've got to figure out whether you're part of the body of our Hamashiach. And how are you the part of the body of the Hamashiach? If you are trying your best to become like him. He says, and mm -hmm. drink the cup of Elohim. Now, why is my, our Messiah called the cup of Elohim? Because that was the vessel, cup's a vessel. His body was a vessel of the Ruach. Okay, yep. so you, this is what he's talking about. Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of Elohim, okay, because his blood represents yep. that he was the vessel, mm -hmm. unworthily, or not seeing that he's not part of the body of the Hamashiach, okay, shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of Elohim, okay, because he, our Messiah, was the body and the blood of of Elohim. Go ahead, brother. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the, of the bread, and let him drink of that cup. Now, this is all talking about circumcision of the heart. That's mm -hmm. how you are part of the body and the blood of our Hamashiach. It's not about the snipping of your foreskins. What did Paul or Shaul say right here? He said, but let a man, and that should be every man, examine himself. So what am I going to do if, if, if I'm leading a congregation and we're giving out the sacraments? Do I check every male to see if he's been physically circumcised or do I let a man examine himself yep. and let's let him let and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Now, again, whether you're spiritually circumcised or you got the circumcision of the heart is what's important here. Because verse 29 is a warning. Go ahead, brother. For the one eating and drinking unworthily eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the body of the Messiah or Elohim. Yep. For this reason, many among you are weak and feeble and many sleep. Amen. And that's what you got to understand. So you don't need to be taking that Passover every year. If you're not fully convinced in your heart that you're re converted, you've repented, and you're walking after Messiah through that circumcision of the heart and doing your best to keep his commandments, then you're part of the body and the blood of Elohim because that's the vessel, okay? He says, for this cause, many are weak and sick among you, and many die They're, and end up dying. Go ahead, brother. Verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. See, and if we judge ourselves mm -hmm. and we follow his commandments, you'll be in that first resurrection and you'll be part of that, that few. Okay, the few that are called, the many that are called and the few that end up getting chosen. If we'll judge ourselves wisely and keep his commandments as best as we can under our own, under the understanding given to us mm -hmm. through the Ruach, not other men, okay, 
then we won't be judged and we'll be blessed and holy or set apart in that first resurrection. Go ahead, brother. Last verse. But when we are judged, we are chastened of Elohim. Yes, sir. We should not be condemned with the world. Now, and that's at the second resurrection when they're going to be condemned with the world. Because if you call to the first and you don't end up getting chosen, then you're going to be in the second and then you're going, there's no time to repent then. You're not going to have that wedding garment that we're going to read about, and you're going to go into the to the lake of fire and you get received the second death. Okay? okay. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24. One of the most quoted chapters. We just mm -hmm. got to believe it. We got to believe it. I got it. And we're going to read 24, 4 through 13. Yep. Matthew 24, starting in verse 4. And Jesus, or Yahushua, answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceives. And we got to really pay attention to what he's saying right here, because yes, if you listen to me, and I tell you wrong, and you believe it because I said so, then you got right. deceived. Okay? I didn't do it on purpose. I was misled. But you're not supposed to be following me or anybody Make else sure you nobody did. you're following our messiah and the book okay yes. go ahead brother verse five for many shall come in my name saying i am christ and shall deceive many now what you see christ is so misunderstood we really need to get to understand it means anointed Good. one yes. messiah was called i mean um, our messiah obviously is the anointed one Okay, the first of those that truly received 100% anointing. But every, Moses was called the anointed one. And every one of the prophets were called anointed ones. The high priest was an anointed one. Okay, it's talking about that Ruach. So it says, for many will come in my name, saying, I am an anointed one. Okay, mm -hmm. I believe I'm anointed of the Spirit. But you're not to follow me. You're to follow our Messiah and Yahuwah's word. And will what? Deceive many. That's many is a problem. We don't want to be part of the many. We want to be part of the few. Amen. Whenever you're ready, brother. Verse 6. And you shall hear wars, rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And and, and right now, with all the turmoils yes, going sir. on in the world, there's all kinds of wars going on in all and in, in diverse places. What does our Messiah say? He said, "You shall hear of wars going on around you, and rumors of other wars." Like I hear people saying, it "Might be World War Three." So what? Right. When World War One came, they said that was the war to end all wars. And then World War II, World War II? well, thing. this is the world, the end all world. We don't know what words, uh, world, the war to end all wars. Yahuwah does. Yep. Okay? Leave that up to him. He said, see that you be not dismayed to be troubled, to be worried. He says, for all these things must come to be, Amen. but the end is what? Not yet. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation. Yes, it will. Kingdom against kingdom. Yes, it will. There shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in different or various places. And it's going on right now all around us, and everybody's all yep. freaked out. Go ahead, brother. And all these are the beginnings of sorrow. We The beginnings of sorrow has been going on for a long, long yes, time, sir. folks. When Messiah went up, they said the spirit of iniquity, Shaul said, that it was already at work. Okay, of lawlessness. See, and that's a, what we live in right now is the day of lawlessness. And the church, the synagogue of Satan, I'm just going to come right out there and say it. Anybody, don't matter whether you're keeping Sabbath or whatever, if you're leading people to yourself, that's what you are. You're the synagogue of Satan. And I'll be the same thing if I was doing that. Don't follow any man. Okay, because all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted mm -hmm. and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Yeah, just for going under his name, yes, you know. Okay. And, and, and even some of them, maybe that are going by a name that's not the correct name. Okay, they may suffer. Right. And there's other play people now in other places already being persecuted because of the, the Hamashiach. Right. Okay, people that claim to be followers of mm -hmm. the Hamashiach.
So it's not all about that. We're going to talk more as we go. Go ahead, Verse brother. 10, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And we're already in that stage, aren't we? People, you know, they'll betray one another. They We want to call each other, uh, what should I say, heathens, or because we don't agree on this doctrine right. or that doctrine, or we don't pronounce the name the same as the other guy. We're going to condemn them, and through that we're going to betray one another, and we'll hate one another. Yep. That's wrong. That Go ahead, brother. Wrong. Verse 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And that's in that can be in the, the larger congregation, which we know is under the Catholic Church. Or that could even be a lot of these congregations that climb to follow Yahuwah or Yahweh or Jehovah. Okay? They'll deceive many. Go ahead, brother. Verse 12, and because a lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You know, what, what, what is he talking about? The love of who? Well, one another, true, but love of the Most High. Because, listen to what that says. And because of lawlessness, or unrighteousness mm -hmm. shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold or become cold. That's talking about our love to Yahuwah even, because our love for one another is much stronger sometimes, and it should not be. Go ahead, brother. Last verse, and because, no, verse 13, mm -hmm. but he that, uh, that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So that this nonsense argument on the internet, I see going back and forth whether or not someone saved immediately, the Greek generally says we are being saved in most cases. In most cases okay, no, doesn't no. mean you're fully saved because of this verse. But he that will endure until the end, enduring what? Keeping his commandments because we love who? Yahuwah and his Hamashiach. Okay, the same will not yet be saved at the resurrection, either the first or second. Is that it, there, brother? Yep. Uh, Luke 13. Let's go to Luke 13. Pick up the thought. Uh, Luke 13. Yeah, Luke chapter 13. Starting in verse 23. I'm there whenever you do. So important. Okay, verse Dispel some false teachings. Let's go ahead, brother. Luke 13, verse 23. Down to 30. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then said one unto him, okay, unto the Messiah, says, Lord, this Lord here is master. Kupi. Or, or Kupi. In the Greek. Master. Mm -hmm. are, there, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them. Now, it's important to get this, and I'm going to tell you uh, why. See, you got to look. Knowing the difference in all these words I'm holding up all the time uh, makes a big difference. They called him master or teacher. Okay, because they knew he was master of the Torah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the right rulings, the Torah. Okay, so knowing that, that's why these people called him master. He says, <laughs> he said, and then said one of them unto him, our Messiah, Kupi, or master, are there few that be saved? Yes, there will. There'll be few that pick for the first resurrection that are mm -hmm. called and come to that. And there'll be just few over the whole many in the second resurrection, and he said unto them, go ahead, brother. Verse 24, <coughs> strive to enter in into that straight gate, mm -hmm. for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. Not be able to, why? 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 Strive, work as hard as you can to work into that straight or that narrow Amen. gate, okay? For many, and that's what you don't want to be part of, and there's many to get the think they're being saved, we're going to see it, and say unto you, we'll seek to enter in, they're not able to. Go ahead. 25, when once the master of the house is risen up and have shut the to the door, and you begin to stand outside or without, and to knock at the door, saying, Master, Master, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not where you are. Now, this is deep, okay? This is not talking about our Messiah. This is talking about Yahuwah, okay? And you can believe me on that or you don't, but I can see it in the text. It says, when the master of the house, who's ultimately the king, our Messiah will be king for a thousand years, and then he's going to turn over that sovereign 
to his father. Okay, so listen, once the master of the house is risen up and, ha and shall shut the door, what happens? The, 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 the age of grace is completely over. It's too late to ask for for re to repent when you're on that on that white throne judgment. You're not going to get to do that. And you will begin to stand outside and to knock at the door saying, Master, Master, open the door to us. And he, our Messiah speaking of his father, shall answer and say unto you, I know you not. From where are you come from? We're going to see it in the wedding supper of the Lamb. We're going to knock that down, too. Go ahead, brother. 26, then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in your presence mm -hmm. and has taught in, in our streets. So a lot of people, this is our Messiah telling you this, is going to be saying at the, at the second resurrection, on the day of the white throne judgment, they're going to say, then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in your presence, and, and what are you talking about? Taking the Passover, okay? That's eating and drinking in his presence. And you have taught in our streets. Now, this teachers, these are people that are up there and considered to be teachers. Go ahead, brother. 27, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not from where you are. Depart from me, all you workers of lawlessness. Now, see, this is talking about at the white throne judgment. This is our Hamashiach, Yahushua, saying, but he, talking about his father, shall say, I tell you, I know not where you come from. Get away from me, all you workers of lawlessness or unrighteousness. Get away from me. Too late to repent. Yeah. You're going to the fire when you get to this point. Go ahead, brother. 28, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of Elohim mm -hmm. and you yourselves are thrust Just out. outside. That's when you're going to get thrust out is at that second resurrection. If you don't get up in the first one and you were called to that first resurrection, but you didn't get chosen because you didn't endure to the end like we read in Matthew 24, too late. You're going to get thrust out, and you're going to see, you'll see Isaac, Jacob, you'll see Abraham, you'll even see some of us, you know, we hope anyway that it's one of, we make that, and you're going to get thrust aside because you chose the world are following man instead of the Most High. Go ahead, brother. 29, and they shall come from the east and from the west. Yes, sir. And from the north and from the south and shall and shall sit down in the kingdom of Elohim. That's talking about everybody that's raised in that second resurrection. They'll come from the north. They'll come, they'll come from the east. They'll come from the west. They'll come from the north and from the south or from every corner of the earth and shall sit down in the kingdom of Elohim, not Yahushua HaMashiach's kingdom, but the new heaven and new earth. Go ahead, Last brother. First, and behold, there are last which shall be first, wow. and, there shall be, and there are first which shall be last. Now, he didn't say all, but there's going to be many people that were before Messiah that are going to raise in that second resurrection. They're going to, be, they're going to come last, and some of those that came first will come last. You, you understand the, the, what he's saying mm -hmm. there? Okay, we're, we're going to... Matthew, last one, 22. Matthew 22. Man, 22, just 22. almost right at an hour. Boy, there's so much more we could have put in this. Yeah. This is so important. If we want to be part of the few and not the many, Matthew 22, which is pre preparing them for Matthew 24. 22, and we're going to read 1 through 14. This is a wedding supper of the Lamb. Most people think this comes pre-millennia. This has got to come. This cannot come until the white throne judgment. And we're, I'm going exp to expound on why. Go ahead, brother. Okay, chapter 22 of Matthew, verse 1. And Jesus, who Yahushua, answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, Kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Now the kingdom of the Shamayim, or the heaven, is talking about the new heaven and new earth because it's up there now with the Father where our Messiah is. But in Revelation 22, we know that yet new Jerusalem and that Shamayim, is, that's coming down here. Okay? So he says the kingdom of heaven is like to a certain king, and that king is Yahuwah which made a marriage 
for his bend. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3, and sent forth his servants to call them that were invited to the wedding, and they would not come. Okay, important to understand that those that were invited, he's not talking about the marriage, those that are going to get married. We know that those in that first resurrection are going to marry the Hamashiach, and there's not going to be any wedding guests appear until the second resurrection, okay? Those will be the ones that Yahuwah finds worthy, and they have that white garment on, and they're going to be able to enter into the kingdom of Elohim. Go ahead, brother. For again, he sent forth other servants. Mm -hmm. Tell them which are invited or bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. So he's talking about all those that's been down through time. They were called but they didn't later get chosen. Well, he's going to talk about why they didn't get chosen as we go along. He says, the re it's ready, folks. It's mm -hmm. ready. It's been ready ever since Messiah was offered up. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5, but they paid no attention to it and mm -hmm. went their ways, mm -hmm. one to his farm, another to his merchandise. So they made fun of it, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what they, when it says made light of it, paid no attention, they made fun of them. Okay, go ahead, brother. Verse 6, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Now, what, who's he talking about the remnant here? He's talking about Israel, the nation, the physical. They, th these messengers that they sent were the prophets. There was Moshe. It was all these Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Okay, they all treated all his servants, the true servants of the Most High, treated them what? Roughly and killed them. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7, but when the king heard thereof, he was he was very angry. And that's talking about Yahuwah. He's the king. Here he was very angry. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. We saw that with Nebuchadnezzar. We saw that over and over again as the physical nation did these things. He sent forth his armies. Go ahead, brother. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were invited were not worthy. And that's talking about the nation of Israel Okay, at that time, because that was the apple of his eye. That was his firstborn son. That was what was pointing to our Hamashiach and the true body, or the true ones. And he says, Then said he to his servants, And the wedding is not yet, is the wedding is ready, but they which were invited were not worthy. The physical nation of Israel, they got cut off permanently when they chose Barabbas instead of our Hamashiach. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9, Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, invite to the marriage. That's our job, guys. That's what we're to be about our Father's Amen. business. We're to be out there sowing those seeds and getting ready for this harvest that is to come and, 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 and because that's what we're to do. Go ahead, verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Not furnished with people that are in the first resurrection, but guests for those that were in the first resurrection to marry our, to marry our Hamashiach that we read clearly in Scripture. Go ahead, brother. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And this is talking about those that are not worthy to go into the kingdom at that white throne judgment, that great white throne judgment. He's, it's too late to repent. The age of grace has already went. You can't, re it's too late. The door's already been shut that we read earlier. Okay, and and you can't go in, so you're going to end up in the fire. Go ahead, brother. Verse twelve, and he he said unto them, friend, how how come you in here not having a wedding garment? Yep. And he was speechless. So, and that's what you might as well be if you get at that second resurrection and you have not chosen Yahusha Hamashiach to be your leader, and you have not done the best you can. Now you're not measured by what you don't know. You're measured by what you do know, and you're going to be surprised some of them that get in and some of them that didn't get in because they knew a lot, but they didn't come through that test. That foolish woman 
that leads them astray, that right. flesh, the world, the body, whatever. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, and bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. Tartarus in the Greek. Go there ahead. shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. That's why the title of this lesson was the fewer or the many, question mark. Where do you want to be? Yahushua HaMashiach also say, if you love mothers, father, sister, brother, anything more than him, you're not worthy of him. And if you're out there preaching the word and you're truly not following him to get to our father, Yahuwah, then you're the synagogue of Satan. That includes me. Okay, or anyone else, we cannot do that because many are called to this first resurrection, but few are going to be chosen. And there'll be few in the second resurrection that have on that wedding garment as well. Hopefully someone got something out of this lesson today. Amen. Then we got edification. You understand yes. the word better. And not that one person on one doctrinal issue is right or wrong on everything. I don't care what it is. We all could be wrong. What we have to understand is we have to be lovers of the truth. If we don't love the truth and we don't mm -hmm. seek it in this scriptures of his, and we follow men, we're going to get deceived and we're going to end up being that one that ends up getting cast into the fire. Hopefully, you, you liked what you heard. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up on YouTube and any of our videos that you like. Make sure you do it on YouTube, not just on Facebook. We get short on those. I know a lot of people like it. They just don't ever think about giving it that thumbs up. If you really like it, share it to your Facebook page. That gets more people to watch. That's what we're out to do is more people to see it. And then hit that notification bell to make sure that you get notified. And we don't want you to forget there's a big eclipse coming on April the 8th, 2024. And we're going to be celebrating the day of the Passover. Okay. That night before, we'll take those sacraments. Okay. And, and anyone that's ready, willing, and ready to take that, we would love for you to come take them with us. Okay. But whether or not you celebrate the Passover then or not, come see this eclipse. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. There's going to be a total <coughs> eclipse yes, of the sir. sun. It's going to be between the same hours, not near as long, as our Hamashiach suffered. And it, it's something to see. So come on down to southern Illinois. We're going to be in the epicenter. May Yahuwah bless until we meet again. Amen.